General Motors' Parade of Progress, traveling the high roads and by roads of America, bringing to millions of Americans in their own hometown the fascinating story behind modern industry, showing actual performances of many of the amazing processes of research that lead to a new and better mode of living for all of us. Parade of Progress was suggested by Charles Franklin Kettering, research chief for General Motors. Mr. Kettering believes that if some of the basic principles and achievements of research in science were popularized and brought to us in a more understandable form, we could get a better conception of the secret of America's industrial leadership and the promise it holds for the future. For, as Mr. Kettering has often said, we should all be interested in the future, because that is where we're going to spend the rest of our lives. The response has been beyond all expectation. Over 11 and one half million persons have seen the show. In the cities visited, those people who came to enjoy this caravan of industry and research averaged over 50% of the population. To create this entertaining exhibition, GM engineers and designers combined their talents in devising an entirely new and different type of caravan. The future liner was designed that looks like something out of the world of tomorrow, yet it embodies many improvements and characteristics that we may actually find in the highway transport of the future. Also, there was the problem of a new big top and engineers set about to create and were successful in building a tent since hailed as the greatest innovation in tent making since the days of Omar. The caravan beneath all its circus trappings carries an important message to the people of America. Here is house evidence the gigantic strides forward that have been made by industry. Here also, for comparison's sake, are survivals of the not too long ago that were hailed as the last word in progress. Here are being set up unanswerable proof, heartening visual testimony of what industry is doing today, proving again how science and industry have rendered invaluable services to every American by creating more and better things for more people. Here are being readied for performance, discoveries of research and science that will serve us in a better tomorrow, and readied by a group of young men who bring to their task a spirit and cheerfulness and great goodwill. Perhaps within the parade of progress and the young men who keep it running, within the overall picture that they represent is the true answer to the oft-repeated question, what makes America great? It is unfailing that wherever the parade of progress sets up, its handlers are never without an audience of small fry admirers. personnel double and brass. They drive the show, put it up, and deliver the lectures that accompany the various exhibits. man has his own work to do and is 
is charged with the responsibility of taking care of his particular exhibit, keeping it spotlessly clean and mechanically perfect. The director of the caravan maintains a close supervision of all activities. His is the task to maintain the standard of excellence established by both the show and its personnel. I'm proud to be your leader. It's a challenge to me to continue to be the kind of gentlemen that you men are. We are men of gentle motors, and if we keep that in mind constantly, we will carry on doing this excellent job, not only for our own corporation, but for industry and all free enterprise. Thanks to you, and good luck. The show finally set up, the next schedule of activities is the performance, an approaching event that sees the overalls of the roustabout exchanged for the neat uniform of the lecturer. The parade of progress is about to begin. Here at the gasoline exhibit, the listeners are informed of an American achievement, tetraethyl lead. Today, providing America with a more efficient and economical fuel for motive power on the farm, road, and in the air. The Allison engine exhibit draws a large attentive audience to hear of this amazing airplane engine which points the way to the future of aviation. Here is the birth of industries exhibit. We see the humble beginnings from which have sprung our great industries. Those organizations which provide Americans with over 12 million jobs which make America the envy of the world in industrial production. The rubber industry, and steel, and automobiles, and petroleum. The rapidly expanding aviation industry. And electricity, too. Now let us observe one of the actual demonstrations showing science at work. An attempt is made to shatter a glass with nothing but sound waves. Sound waves which are moving up and out of the tube. With the glass placed between the ends of the tube, the young man proceeds to tune in on the natural frequency of the glass. And that glass, ladies and gentlemen, was shattered by nothing but sound waves. Research and science, of course, are also to be considered from the woman's point of view. This familiar insignia and the phrase body by Fisher were unknown, but everybody knew a gorgeous, stylish Gibson girl, or wished he did. In my merry old mobile, you remember that hit song? Well, this was the buggy, no top, no windshield. What's merry about it? 1910, and there's the hobble skirt that did the bunny hug, don't ask me how, while Ziegfeld stages his first folly. Came close car body, crazy, said the world of 1910. The 1920s brought shorter skirts and bobbed hair and the famous Fisher body girl herself, while streamlining became the order of the day. If you don't believe it, look at the shapely chassis. 1941 has everything. Freedom, poise, perfect balance, lustrous loveliness, and still, body by Fisher. The car, not the girl, of course. And what about the future? No one can predict for sure. But one thing is certain. Progress will go on. The best proof of that statement is not the imaginary highway of 1960 pictured here, but the record of the past.
The March of Motors. An American crossroads, the year 1900. Axiomatic it is that lines intersect at a point, and prime point of America is a dot on the map. Far in the U.S., where roads meet, there are dots, and there life begins. But at the century's turn, unchanged for generations, untouched by time, America's crossroads slept, awaiting the cock crow of a strange new dawn. In the 90s, or not enough, one day was like another, alike as two peas in a pod. For man and beast, life still turned in its same small radius. Man's need fixed his horizon from birth to death. Life circuit was in a nutshell. To Cracker Bell Society, strange indeed was a weird contraption destined to shake every crossroads from its age-old sleep, remake it from top to bottom, turn it literally upside down, and confound its critics. The horseless carriage. Same American crossroads, the year 1920. In the face of time's inexorable march, Rip Van Winkle's 20 years sleep was a fleeting moment. But to U.S. life at the crossroads, two decades compassed a century of undreamed of change. Undreamed of was garage, free air, flat sticks. New words these, new desires. For men having invented the wheel, speeded it overnight, faster and faster, turned it to his needs. And as his needs broadened, so did his horizons. And mushrooming overnight were new structures to satisfy man's new wants, to break his desires. Undreamed of was a bank, but man's new business requires credit and finance. And man's new leisure requires a playhouse. And in the steps of one-time harvest hands, tread quick lunches. City and country are next door neighbors. Until a one-time crossroads finds itself a suburb with new homes, new living, and new pleasures. America's crossroads today. Still our crossroads grows apace with its new four-lane highway and super service station. Such is progress. The sturdy gives way to the sturdier. Man builds, tears down, and builds again. Civilization comes to our crossroads and hardly pauses before a newer crossroads appears. Two score years ago, meaningless would have been a bus depot. Today it is the center of ever-increasing bustling activity bringing new residents, new business, new pupils to grow into tomorrow's citizens. So up another notch in the postal scale moves America's crossroads. Up sprouts a new school, a far cry from the little red schoolhouse of the 90s. Still community center is America's crossroads. Life began at the intersection of two lines, and now the highway is a continuous main street. Still a backbone, still a dot on the U.S. map, it has carried out its promise of 1900. There, at the century's turn, needing only the automobile to transform it, still there today is the seed of growth of an even greater American crossroads of tomorrow. Time marches on. <laughs> If the parade of progress inspires one boy to dream of helping build a future and a greater America, then much has been accomplished. For there will always be a frontier where there are open minds and willing hands. Research and science have had a startling influence on our way of living, on the homes, too. This home of another day with its kerosene lamp, its wood stove, and its pump in the kitchen is a far cry from our modern conveniences. Here's a kitchen that not so long ago would have been mistaken for a magician's act. Nothing old-fashioned but the flowers. The last word in beauty, convenience, and efficiency. 
and the living room of the future. With air, sound, and light conditioning, curtains made of glass, plastic upholstery, a listening library, windows made of coal, air, and water, and even a Calanews machine to bring your daily paper right to your easy chair. Fantastic? Maybe. But modern industrial research, new materials and processes, and modern production methods are working always toward a better design for living. The old scout exhibit in the center of the lot is one of the most interesting shows of all. To understand today and visualize the future, we must be familiar with yesterday. Here indeed was an early forebearer of a means of conveyance which changed the face of America as well as the habits of its people. It took more than a flick of a key and a step on the starter to get old Scout running. Ah, quite a bit more. And yet the funny part of it is, old Scout wasn't funny 40 years ago. It was the slickest thing on the pike. What makes you think research and science won't make our streamlined cars of today look just as old-fashioned 10 or 20 years from now? Hurry, hurry, hurry. See the big tent show. All kinds of wonders of today and tomorrow. Exhibitions on exhibition. Demonstrations after demonstrations. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hey, hold on there. It's absolutely free. Come see the big tent show. Hurry, hurry, hurry. This device has a dual personality. It will actually freeze and cry at the same time. And that is what you might term a reasonable facsimile of a fried egg. Our newspaper has not been damaged. We find that the ice cream is just as cold now as it was when we first placed it there. In fact, it's even more so because the ice cream has been freezing while our egg has been fried. This show inside the big top is a continuous demonstration of industrial research and developments of the kind that are found in nearly every modern research laboratory that has helped to devise and manufacture the new and remarkable products now serving the American people. <laughs> Proving over and over again, who serves progress, serves America. And so, the parade of progress comes to an end. Soon the huge silver tent will be folded away and the great future liners will roll off to their next destination. telling the fascinating story behind modern American science and industry and what it means to all of us. <laughs> <laughs>